Hello. What's up? So, thank you for joining us, you three, mm -hmm. uh, for another fine, fine movie review. Instead of you three, it should be you few. You few. You marry few. Yes. Um, stick stick to the stick to our uh, YouTube channel's naming convention because we wanted to call it. We were bouncing around scene by two, but scene by few rhymed, and at least was a tiny bit more optimistic. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Should we cut this and go back? No, this is funny. Yeah, yeah, no. This is it's our <laughs> mo. We'll just keep on, just keep on rolling. Fuck it, we're doing it live. <laughs> so, this is a new to the scene, mm -hmm. and uh, this week we decided. Well, it was one of those rare occasions where a movie came out, and we were actually able to go see it relatively close to release because it released last week. Yeah. So about a, about a week ago from when we were filming this one. Right. We went so. to we went to see it on uh, Sunday. Yeah. Which yeah. I usually don't go to the weekend showings for for new movies just because you get full of people. Yeah, and we went early on a Sunday. Anyways, mm -hmm. I'm sure you already know by reading the title. Mm -hmm. um, the movie that we were reviewing this week was the Homestar Runner uh, movie that they did recently. Um, I I personally thought it was fantastic. I loved it. Um, <laughs> now we're doing Thor, mm -hmm. Love, and Thunder, and uh, I don't think that's how the emphasis goes, but we'll we'll, we'll do it. We'll deal with it. I think I, I think I nailed it. Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. All right. So, um, as normal, the usual format is mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go ahead and get it out the way. We're going to go ahead and take a guess at what each other rated it, and we'll show what we what we thought of it, and then after that, full on in spoiler territory. So, do we want to do with uh, recommends before we do that, just in case people are cut it off short? Just be like, I mean, at, at this point in time, it's a Marvel movie. I think you know if you want to see it or not. Yeah, but I mean, also, I figure like, I mean, if it got past like a five or a six with us, I'm pretty sure that means we recommend it. Okay. So, yeah, but you do the math. Okay. I mean, calculate the numbers. If you put his score and my score together, what we gave it, and it equals like a ten, yeah, it's probably probably pretty safe bet. I would say eleven. Okay, eleven. Let's do eleven. Because if both of us give something a five, you probably don't need to go. You probably don't need to go to the theater to see this one. Yeah. Or need, need to go to the theater to see that one, that hypothetical movie. That's a that's an eleven. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's say eleven, at worst. So. Yeah. If 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 our combined score an eleven, go see it. Hmm. If it's a a ten, you probably wait for streaming. Less than ten. Mm. Yeah. Catch it on Netflix if you have someone's password. Yeah, kind of don't, don't pay for it. So, all right. So, would you like? Uh, what did you? What did you think of Thor: Love and Thunder? <clears throat> so, I will go ahead and say off the top, uh, Ragnarok was better, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, I would give Love and Thunder. I mean, it's to me, it was a solid six. So, <laughs> pow, 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 Nick's on a roll. Oh, well, we also went to lunch after and we didn't we did not talk about the movie but we did give kind of like so what do you think and just kind of like brief overviews and just kind of like what we were thinking of a lot a lot of times i like i like having some time to mull a movie over before we talk about it because you know i might have watched it and gone oh i like that and then i have a day and i'm like oh wait why did they do this and this and this and then like the number slowly starts dropping from your nine. brain's just sitting there like why did what did they mean to do this or well, it's, it's kind of like when we watched um <clears throat> The new Spider-Man movie was No Way Home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that movie's a nine. I watched it again. It's probably more like an eight. Just, mm -hmm. we, I, we reviewed it pretty close to me having seen it. I didn't have time to mull it around. And I think the nostalgia factor is kind of like, man, this movie's great. And then you watch it again. And like, no, it's, it's pretty, still pretty good. But it's not. I think it's definitely pulling on the nostalgia a bit. Uh, it's just there's a certain scene where they introduce Something. a certain character. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. was just, it, man, it's just yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah. for me. <clears throat> All right, so uh, you, you fucking destroyed it. So how about you, Nick? What would you give this movie? Um, I will agree with you in that uh, uh, Ragnarok is better. Mm. I still, however, enjoyed this movie just because oh, it's it's goofy. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I'd give it a seven. I see you, start, <laughs> see you changing numbers. I see you changing your numbers. Did you pick six as well? That's it's my that's my lot in life. I'm just... <laughs> it's, it's, so I think there is, well, I guess, so now we're going to start, like, the movie's in theater still. Go, go, at this point in time, I mean, what do we give it, a 13? 
How many between the two of us? Six and seven. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's thirteen. That's a, I think that's a, a, a nice recommend between between the pair of us yeah. to at least uh, it's at least theater worthy. I think. Yeah. Go um, see Thor and love the thunder. But I have a feeling if you were to wait a month for it to be on Disney Plus, you're not really necessarily missing out on anything either. Yeah, and and, and it's also just real quick. Uh, you don't necessarily have to see Ragnarok. Because no. they do a pretty good job of like doing like here's all the beats you missed kind of a thing at the beginning of this I mean, movie. This one doesn't. This, this one doesn't really follow Ragnarok anyway. It follows um, Endgame. Yeah, and you kind of see where Thor was at the end of Endgame because Endgame is the one that kind of like fully wrecked his character. They, they've been slowly destroying like Thor's happiness mm-hmm. over the course of all these movies, and at the end of Endgame, you're like, well, he's not going to get any more unhappy wrong yeah wrong <laughs> all right so bye um it's in the theaters go watch, check it out it'll be on disney plus probably in a month and a half based on how quickly um dr strange 2 came to disney plus so. yeah i'd say about a month um do us a favor mm-hmm. just like and maybe subscribe mm-hmm. tell a friend tell your mom because moms love me and friends love nick <laughs> so you're doing them a favor Help us get this channel off the ground. I don't think friends love me. I'm your friend and I love you. But you're already my friend. I loved you first and then I became your friend. Took enough sending you texts saying, your furniture looks good from your front yard before you finally let me (laughs) in. So, um, What can I say? I was bored. Hmm? What can I say? I was bored. Yeah. And I needed a D&D partner. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it also helped that I had like ice cream and stuff like that too. Let me in. I DM. (laughs) <laughs> it's like oh, come on in <laughs> all right so spoilers bye okay and welcome back if you just restarted it yeah if you went so, if you went to the theaters real quick between between uh the pause or if you watched like a really janked up version that was from a camera don't do that they kept saying like bet 20x at the fucking like upper corner and don't do that yeah don't do that that's that's bad no, it's that's not even that's not even a wink wink nudge nudge for me. Yeah, no. I so personally, like back in the day when those movies used to come out, like the cam version, mm-hmm. I would watch them. But like, it's honestly like the worst experience you yeah, can get. Yeah, that's fucking awful. Especially like when the, like the sound is all echoey and you have someone's head doing this shit in front of you the entire time. It's fucking people chewing it's popcorn. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> I kind of like this movie. Mm-hmm. It was goofy. Based on how Ragnarok was, I kind of knew it was going to be goofy. But mm-hmm. they definitely go, they lean on kind of the silly, comedic aspect of it even more than than Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Which I think is probably going to be a turn off to a bunch of people. Because you always hear people complain about Marvel humor. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of a movie of Marvel humor. Well, I mean, it's Taika Waititi. Mm-hmm. So, and like, he, they got him in to like bring up. A lot of the goofy shit, and I personally, I love the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Korg's a little much, but well, I mean, he's he's fine. He's he's getting to be a little much. Well, he's he's an idiot, but yes. I mean, you know, that's you, you got a guy whose brain's made of rock, mm-hmm. so you know. Um, but like, he's literally Taika Waititi. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I I didn't so much enjoy the movie in the beginning of it mm-hmm. because it starts off with like. Korg basically saying, "Here's the background of Thor. Yeah. Thor did this, and he did that, and like he's giving you the like the quick beats, yeah. you know, kind of like a story he's telling his kids or something like that." Yeah, he takes you through. He's he's basically taking you through the montage, and like they were doing like these rapid fire jokes that were like it was too much. Like in the mm-hmm. beginning, I, it was like you didn't have time to laugh at the next joke because you didn't have time to laugh at the first joke because the next joke is like coming at you so fast, mm-hmm. and they just kind of kept rapid firing. St- and it just felt real disjointed in the beginning of it for mm-hmm. me. And then I realized that it was so weird is because it was Korg telling the story. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he's like over embellishing and, and saying crazy shit. And then by the end of the movie, you realize that it's basically Korg just recanting the entire movie. Mm-hmm. So, like, as as how true it was by, like events like they could literally make another thor movie that was like what actually happened mm-hmm. and this one was all just cord bullshitting his way through like the recanting of the tale um <clears throat> it's almost like this one could just be like i don't know it's it's weird like the the fiction version of a 616 tale yes i'm still not going to call it 616 uh, <laughs> cinematic I'm... universe has adopted it so well, there, this, there we are. The cinematic universe could come and uh, rewrite all my comic books for me. Well, you know, 
It's that's which was a nice way to say S my D. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, but like they they needed they wanted to put that little thing in there so when people heard six one six like people were like Whoa, and then the other half people are like what the fuck does that mean yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's a it's a nod to the comics not official if anything they just have said six one seven yeah like a, a very close adjacent fucking dimension because they they have changed enough stuff in six one six where or, or in the cinematic universe and between six one six where it's it's never going to tie together. Oh, it's never supposed to be. The the, the, <clears throat> the movie universe is like one nine 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 nine, but you don't want to put that as a nod because that's a real fucking long. What? So you just kind of put the six one six thing, and it being there as a nod, I'm fine with. Mm. But that's another universe calling their universe six one six. It's not canon to our universe where we call the comic book six one six. Wrong universe, like a different universe, isn't going to have the same n- number and convention as our universe. Well, you know, there's always the off chance that she was just wrong. I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, was, it was a joke. It's not a. It's not official. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to stand by the not official. Just a, just a nod to be like, look, we call it the comic book. Did we get flagged? Did we get flagged for content? No. Because we were like, fuck that. It's not six one six. Did like the nerds take us down yet? <laughs> no, oh I no. Think, I think we're still good. Oh no, the video disappeared. <laughs> no. It's not going to be the nerds bitching about six one six. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I mean, when she said it in the movie, I was just like, eh, okay. yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of how I took it too. But also, like, but not really. Yeah, it's like this is six one six, ah, but not really. <laughs> and then continued on with the movie. It's, well, it's like when when we were sitting in the so we're talking about a different movie now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this isn't really. I mean, I guess it's kind of spoilery, but like when they said that, half the theater were like, ah, and the other half of the theater were like, ah, whatever. Oh, I went. I, I went to see that one when there was like five people in the theater, so I didn't get shit. I just got to watch the movie. I hate watching movies in crowds. It's awful. So here's another question. Like, what what number universes did everyone on the council come from? Because... They're, they're that universe. Well, Xavier was mm-hmm. the comic book. He was the animated TV show version. That's not 616. He wasn't... Like, what, what, he, what universe is animated X-Men? He was, he was just... He was whatever universe they made up. That is all of that. The Illuminati was all from that universe, and it's probably an amalgam of a bunch of different. From the animated universe? No, he's he's he was not he wasn't animated because he wasn't a cartoon Lance. Yes, but he, he was, was driving around the little, little rocket sled. Okay, follow but... follow me, <laughs> follow me on this one. He was in the yellow wheelchair. Yep, and it even did the when they showed him. Yep, that was the animated version of Charles Xavier. Uh, the music was uh, for us. They didn't. It's not like he walked into the thing and people guys were like, "Okay, hit it," and they hit the. Mo- it's non diagenetic mo- music, as uh, we went over in a previous discussion. That was animated universe fucking example. No, it was. It shared qualities because he had the yellow chair, mm-hmm. and like, ooh, the theme played. The, the theme didn't play in the Illuminati room. You didn't hear. You didn't see uh, him going. Oh, I've seen this show, because it, it wasn't. It didn't play in. The, it didn't play in the room. That was music for the audience to be like, oh, Charles Xavier. And, oh, they did the admit. Well, they played the theme in something else, too, that we haven't talked about. Yes, which we'll talk about later. But that is the people spitting in their hand before they gave you the hand job. That's just kind of the, that's just kind of the, 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 the lead up to it. That's the sad lube before. <laughs> Got it. All right. Okay. I'm there's, there's getting you ready. We're there now. All right. We're there. <laughs> We're there. Okay. So, um... Yeah, it, it was decent. Like, mm-hmm. I was expecting, I guess, when Ragnarok came out, I was unsure because it was kind of like, okay, some, I like when the Marvel movies, and personally, I like the dialogue, and I like almost all of the Marvel movies, but like, I like it when comedy comes from like, moments of tension and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, one of my favorite scenes was when um, Black Widow was talking to Loki when he was in the cage. And he was just like, you know, and I'm going to do this to y'all, and I'm going to do this, and you mewling quim, and blah, 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 and he's talking all that shit. And she's like, you're a monster. And he was like, oh, just wait till you see what I do with this. Because mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to say anything, because there's that one person that will eventually watch this has not seen... You've seen the Avengers, come on. It, just saying. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, she's like, oh, I got everything out of him. He's like, fucking what? Like, yeah, that... she was playing him, and... Yeah, yeah. That, that, that bits, those bits of comedy, unexpected stuff, it's... I love it. Mm-hmm. But, like, this one was just comedy. Funny, 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 funny. Like, it was just coming at you so rapid fire. Uh, so some of it was, like, of course you got the screaming goats, which, so, I mean, that's an old internet meme. Yeah. When they were shooting this movie. 
But I mean, eh, whatever. But then you'd also have things that were, came, kind of came from it when like Zeus flicked off, flicked his clothes off, and he was meant to be do a little flick, but it was a big flick. Yeah. And comedy came from that, and it wasn't like a joke necessarily. So there are comedy bits in it that aren't just jokey, but it is also jokey. Because I mean, also like when you watch it, Korg's god is sitting on a throne of scissors, because you know, rock beats rock, scissors. Yeah, rock beats scissors. Yeah. I see. I, I caught him doing that, but I did not get the joke. And you and Amber started ma- laughing like immediately, and I was like, you know. And then later on, when y'all started talking about, it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, funny. Rock beats scissors. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's subtle stuff, but there's also the in your face stuff, and I think the in your face stuff is so in your face. It, well, it was just it, some of the stuff. I, it was just it was coming at me so fast. It's mm-hmm. like when my brain is processing one joke and like the next joke is coming and the next joke is coming, but like little things. The stuff that made me laugh the hardest in the movies was um, Russell Crowe. Mm-hmm. Like I think he fucking killed it as Zeus. Yeah, I thought he was, good. but like when he was doing like he was doing the fucking lightning bolt, like he was a chef at fucking Benny <laughs> Hanna, you know, and like he's fucking doing like the thing and flipping it up behind his back and shit. Oh, it's, like, and also subtle comedy because when he when he lands his little thing comes down and he uh, holds holds the, uh, Dude, the, the skirt. I laughed so fucking hard at that part because yeah, he's got like little skirt like on his armor, and when he walks down the steps, he grabs the sides of the fucking skirt. And he's like, deep, 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 and he even did like the sideways <laughs> yeah, walk yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that part was so fucking funny. Um. But there was like the dumpling god. I was like, okay, that's funny to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, Pixar fans, I'm assuming. I guess. I, I just, I didn't get it. Um, but I listened to like some other podcasts where they were talking about how it's just another property of um, like the, some people think it's connected to Bao. That's, that's what I thought it was. I thought that, um, that little Pixar short or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. But then like there's another. There's another thing. Apparently, there's something out there that's like some kind of brand um, mm. that, that it could have been loosely based on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But um, the storyline was interesting. Yeah. I thought the whole thing with Jane Foster was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad that Natalie Portman was back for the role. Oh, yeah. And she like bulked up, too. She looked... Like, she her did. arms were thick. She, was, she looked good. I mean, honestly, like they ruined the reveal that it was her. Like I didn't know anything about it. Well, they put, they put that in the trailers, which is unfortunate. Well, she also went to like one of the conventions, and then that's when they like did the big announcement and everything that she was back. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so hard to go into these movies blind. Yeah, but like her wearing the Thor helm and everything like that, I couldn't tell it was her. No, oh, well, there's easily. So I I couldn't tell. Like first the first uh, trailer I saw with her, um, when she had the Thor helmet on, I was like, I didn't I didn't see it. Well, I mean, I mean, it also helps that I know that Mighty Thor is Jane Foster. Did Did you know that? So, I did know that Jane Foster became a Thor. Mm-hmm. I did not know that the mighty Thor mm-hmm. was her. I mean, but I did know that she, at one time, was she wielded Mjolnir. Yeah, and I also know that she had she wielded Mjolnir. Like, Jane Foster had cancer, mm-hmm. and then she would wield Mjolnir and be, like, better or whatever. See, I didn't know about the whole cancer storyline. So, like, that kind of took me aback. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I thought they were going to, like just kind of wave away the whole, well, she's got cancer because she became Thor and her godly powers now are going to make her where, you know, you know, she doesn't have to worry about the cancer, but I did like the fact that they took that side spin. It's like when you're wearing the hammer, like your body is not getting better. It's not making you better. It's kind of using your stamina to fuel. fuel You're using all of your good fighting energy to like, you know, become this person. Um, I've not read much with mighty Thor, but I've read some of Gwenpool. And Gwenpool's an interesting character because she's from our universe. Mm. And during like the, the s- s- secret invasion, whatever it was, she got pulled into the Marvel universe. Mm. And she knows that when you're in a Marvel comic, if you're a background character, you're fucked because it's the Marvel universe. So you have to be a main character. Mm. So she became a like superhero so that she would have comics written about her so that she would be okay. And she had to like be kind of funny because if you're kind of funny and the goofy person, nothing awful happens to you. And it's, it's kind of an interesting little storyline. Like the very first thing that she's in is fucking awful. It's like a Howard the Duck comic. But then she gets her own like little com- like comic story line. And it's funny. And she runs across Jane Foster at one point in time. Mm. And she is a... Um, Gwenpool is working as like a villain, essentially. Mm. And Jane Foster's fighting. And she's like, you can't you can't fight me, Jane. And she's like, what? What? She's like, why don't you come up here and have a talk conversation with me real quick. So they go to the side and have like a little side conversation. She's like looking back over at her buddies. And then Jane's like, all right, well, just go away. And <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I didn't know anything about Gwenpool. Gwenpool's funny. I, I kind of enjoy her. But that's, I, I thought the only thing that, like, what's... So we're not talking about Gwenpool. We'll talk after the video. <laughs> um, but... 
there was a there was a muddy Thor reference in, in that in that book, and that kind of amused me. So is it okay? I have to ask now because mm-hmm. it's going to bother me. Mm-hmm. So like you had like Panda Pool, Barista Pool. They like they had like all the I different. I don't think I don't think her design looks maybe somewhat similar to, to Deadpool, but she's her name is Gwen, last name Pool, mm-hmm. and then her superhero name was just Gwen so is she Gwen Stacy. No, so she she she's, has... a, she's a Gwen. So she has nothing to do with Gwen Stacy. Nothing to do with Gwen Stacy. Okay, because I thought it was going to be another one of those amalgams of like Gwen Stacy no, no. and Deadpool. No, no, no. She's, a, right. she's her own person, and it was just kind of a... I originally show her in our own world, and she's sitting in like a Marvel Fanatics bedroom because she's on the bed reading comics, and you see like the posters all over the wall. Kind of like... um, It reminds me a little bit of um, Into the Spider-Verse, hmm. when you've got Peter B. Parker kind of like eating pizza, the portal opens up, and he's just looking at it. <laughs> takes in the... <laughs> okay and then gets pulled into another universe so it has nothing to do with Deadpool nothing to do with Deadpool although she does fight Deadpool at one point in time and she and she breaks the fourth wall like him she does but she breaks the fourth wall for a different reason it's because she was she's a human in our world got pulled into the Marvel Universe and now she's she doesn't like have any powers but she generally understands that getting injured is not that thematically interesting or whatever so if you like do things to dodge bullets when the writer's gonna make the bullets miss you so she's got the power of being a main character and then just foreknowledge so i wanted so back in the day i had an ad idea mm-hmm. for a character for a comic character and um the power was it's go- the the power of the character was it could run forward through the comic book mm-hmm. to find out what the conclusion was and like the whole shtick was going to be is that the character could move between mm-hmm. the margins of the comic panel she does a little bit of that so it was going to have like reads going like oh shit and then you flip like one page and there would be like two or three boxes that were empty and then he comes run he or she comes running back mm-hmm. and they're like okay i know what we need to do and then when you go like five or six more pages there's that one frame that's like at the very top where you see the character peeking in mm-hmm. to read everything that was on the page yeah get, kind of getting foreknowledge or whatever yeah but then like there's only so far that that shtick would go yeah you know, i mean I, th- I, th- I think that gwenpool first comic run was like five volumes of trade paperback so it's mm. It's not. It's not much, hmm. but it's kind of funny. I mean, it's she runs into uh, Miles Morales on the subway and just kind of like looking at him starstruck. And he's like, "Who the fuck are you?" And she does like this little hand motion and freaks him out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, th- that's enough to make me want to read a few of the comics now. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, tangent. So, tangent. Huge tangent. But you know, I think there was some valuable stuff in there. Yeah, read Gwenpool. It's fun. It's funny. If you like, if you like, if you like this silly movie, I think you would like Gwenpool. Okay. It's right. just kind of a, it's silly. It's not, don't take itself too seriously. Like the villain is Modok and she laughs at him for being Modok because he's Modok and Modok's not scary. And then he immediately disintegrates the person next to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. I'm, I'm I'm interested in reading it now. But I've got the pop downstairs. I, I literally thought it was Deadpool and Gwen Stacy mix up. So nice. That's, right. that's, that's where I started originally too. I'm like, Gwen's pool? I'm like, another Gwen. We've got Spider Gwen. We've got Gwen pool. I'm like, okay. That's, I thought it was just another mashup, but there you have it. So, um, so um, something I liked in this movie. Yes. Um, Christian Bell was fucking great. Amazing. Um, it feel His story arc feels incomplete because I feel like there was probably a fuck ton of God butchering going on mm. and they just scissored that shit out. And I wanted to, I, I, I don't know if it's an attempt, but I don't know if it was time. Or maybe to make the movie, like, maybe you've got scenes where a guy's rocking around murdering gods. Maybe that's a bit too dark for the tone you're going for. Um, His whole uh, stuff was very dark. But having, like, earlier scenes on. Because, I mean, he killed shit god. Like, the god that was, like, mm-hmm. the sun guy that was being a complete and to him. Mm-hmm. And then we're told that he's killed a bunch of other gods. And we see, like, the corpse of another god. Mm-hmm. I think it would have built him up more of a villain if you see him killing gods that aren't pieces of shit. Because when you go into, like, the Venice City or whatever it was called, mm-hmm. all those gods were pieces of shit, too. Mm-hmm. So I think you needed to show him killing gods that weren't pieces of shit in order to make him more villainous. But then your tone of your movie might change a little bit. And maybe you start... I don't know if they're trying to make him more uh, empathetic as a character because he's kind of right. From everything we've seen, he's kind of right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was he was right place, right time for the situation that mm-hmm. was presented to him. Like... Had it been me, that dude got off easy. Like, oh, the yeah. nut store to the head or whatever. Yeah, that yeah. dude got off so easy because mm-hmm. that he was just the 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 way he was talking. Please, my lord, my my daughter died, and all we need is rain. He's like, oh, he thinks it thinks that 
oh, it's one of mine. Like, yeah, that, that oh, yeah. dude was such a fucking douche. And it's like, oh, it's eating my food. <laughs> yeah, now it's eating my food. Yeah, like, it's just that, that whole bit. Right place, right time. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine pointed out that the thing that was wielding uh, the sword mm-hmm. was like like it was dipped in tar. It was full black. Mm-hmm. And as the movie went on, gore got more and yeah, more. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's kind of like bleeding from it. Like, yeah. it's, it seems like, I think it's supposed to mirror Jane. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, he essentially has necro cancer or whatever. And she's got real, like, yeah. what, what does she have, stomach cancer? I, I, can't, felt, I, can't, I can't remember what she had. Was it brain? I don't remember. She has cancer. Yeah, yeah. All I, cancer is terrible. I see, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I think stomach cancer. Uh, a side tangent. My mom found a box of World War II letters and we were reading them. Mm. And just to kind of tell you how different the 40s were and how awful that shit was. Um, my my great uncle in the mail in December of 44 got a like, oh, well, sorry I didn't tell you about your dad, but he's fine. And then the next month, oh yeah, your dad died. <laughs> and that they're just kind of like not telling people shit in like you're over in Germany or wherever. So like, don't tell them the bad shit. Mm. And I think he had stomach cancer. So I think I mixed up my... Uh, Mixed up my cancers. Interesting. Ooh, I'll okay. tell you about it more just because it's side stuff. But I recently is it some sort of cancer. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to just derail your thought. Go ahead. No, I'm mean, just. I, I, that's why I think I got I pulled stomach cancer from. I don't remember. I don't remember if they mentioned. Maybe they did. I it's. I feel like they were going through at some point. So it's been a week since yeah, we watched yeah. the movie, and it was early in the morning. Um, we went and we discussed it, but I, for some reason, I was thinking they were showing like pictures of her brain. They might have, they might have, I, I don't I don't remember exactly, but regardless, whatever it was, it was like she was stage four. Yeah, terminal. So yeah, and then she was like, "Oh, maybe you'll get better," you know. And she was like, "No, stage four is like the end of the. Yeah, it's, it's, it goes it's, up to four. And she's like, "Where do you think it goes after that?" And she's like, "Stage five, six, and it's like now. No. Stage four is as big as there is, like as far as we know. Yeah. Um, like, no, but if they managed to make that because she had like when she was in the like, chemo chair or whatever, she was keeping high spirits about it, which. I think it's true to life. If a lot of people who are going through dark shit manage to kind of keep the humor to it and keep themselves going, and it seemed like it. Did they say if she got blipped or not? Uh, it in other properties, I think they listed Jane Foster as a blip, and it was hinted at in this one when Thor was like, or when she was like to Thor, like, "Oh, it's been like three years," and he's like eight because she was gone for five years. Well, the blip bought her five, uh, a few more years then. Because if she was that bad at that point, she'd yeah. probably have been dead for this movie. Yeah. If she wouldn't have blipped. She would have so, died five years earlier. Or not. Who knows? But anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. Christian Bale was amazing. Yeah. Um, Would like to see more of him. And I think to build him up more as a villain. But you had kind of funny villainous moments to, with him, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Like when he was in the cage and he like pulled the head off the little snake creature. Just be like, what? You're talking about pulling off heads. It was funny. It was funny five seconds ago. Yeah, and then he got extremely dark. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, I agree with you. So, I don't like this new thing they're doing where they're trying to make all the bad guys sympathetic. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want my bad guys to be bad guys. You can occasionally have the story. It, it, and I don't... And I like a mixture of both. Well, I mean, I like knowing the mission. Mm-hmm. I like knowing that it's more than... Well, you want me to tell you my master plan? Well, it's, it's money, of course. It's always money. Mm-hmm. But, like, now it's like... My daughter died. The thing I believed and devoted my life to was like a complete and utter fucking douchebag, does not care about me, and mm-hmm. I just happen to have the Deus Ex Machina sitting right beside me yeah. to fucking off it. So it was... I liked his storyline. I liked his background. I think Christian Bale is an amazing actor. Um, but I agree with you. It's like I also don't like this whole thing where they're just killing off like all the bad guys. And I know he's a small character. Like... I didn't know who Gore the God Hunter was before this movie. So, like, when everyone was like, Gore the God Hunter, and I'm like, who the fuck is that? It's God Butcher. God but, Butcher. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But I knew very, very little about him. Um, one of the shows, I, I mean, I've shown it to you before, Drawfee. Yes. They were drawing obscure Marvel characters, and one of them was Gore the God Butcher. Ah. And that's the first time I'd ever heard of him. Okay. And I didn't really look into him much after that. It's just kind of like, Gore the God Butcher, whatever. Like, I didn't put much stock in him, and apparently he's... Did they draw a dude like chopping up a god like he was in, working in a deli or something like that? No, they made they made him. I think it was Julie that was the one that was drawing him, so she made him look fucking weird, as she usually does, and okay. gave him like a big fucking cleaver or something. 
Okay. So he's the God Butcher. Yeah. Well, is, I thought it'd be a, a butcher of gods. Yeah. Like cutting up Jesus cutlets or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyways. Uh, Call him Jesus. Yes. Just it's so good. P- power in every bite. Um, <laughs> I mean, you'll buy one box, but it'll be like you're buying a hundred. Yeah. I mean, actually eating them is sac- sacrilegious. <laughs> it really is. But, um, buy, buy three people. <laughs> it, contains, it contains the body of Christ. <laughs> all right let's stop <laughs> there's somebody new that was just like oh these seem like interesting and guys off. and no um <laughs> yeah, we just got canceled by uh christianity um yeah it's so core i think he's great mm-hmm. um i like that jane foster was back i like the mm-hmm. awkwardness between the two characters yeah like them it, it almost felt like high school Mm-hmm. You know, where it's like, oh, have you been? Oh, I've been great. Well, I've been great, too. I mean, I'm, I'm so a, good. I've been even greater. Yeah, yeah, that whole thing. Um, it's nice that you're with Mjolnir. I've got Stormbreaker now. Like, we're super cool. It's like Thor hanging out with humans has, like, affected him, like, greatly. Because in the first movie, he was, like, very confident and very, bo- you know, boisterous and everything like mm-hmm. that. And now he's just, like, his character's so silly. Yeah. It's, I mean, he was always kind of... hit. It's weird, because you're supposed to be, like... He's supposed to be funny by the fact that he doesn't fit in. And now they've just like made him stupid, too. Which yeah. Which maybe he always was kind of stupid. I don't He was always definitely arrogant, which led him to do stupid-ass shit. But he was never, like, a fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, it's like he's they, they like he's almost Chad, yeah. the god of frat, frat boys or something <laughs> like that, the way they, they portray him. I think when they he's did him... He's almost party Thor. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, totally. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just... He's such an airhead. Um but I guess when you're like a god, super indestructible, you don't fucking lose. All you do is fucking win. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that would take a lot of the care out of it. People are usually a little more cautious when there's... Well, I think uh, all the care being taken out of it is also, you know, all of his family being dead. Yeah. I think he just had no more shits to give. Well, yeah, it's like they, they just set him up for lose, 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 lose. And then, you know, and I liked the whole storyline of basically... Him losing everything that he had, him going into a depression. Mm-hmm. That's something you don't see, yeah. you know, um, in well, comic book esque movies. Which was fun about Endgame, too, was like, even though he still felt down on himself, he was still worthy to wield Mjolnir. And the way he, the way he, like, when he picked it up and was like, I'm still, or when he called it and it came to him, and he's like, I'm still worthy, <laughs> like, the way he said that. Yeah. Like, that actually brought tears to my eyes, mm-hmm. uh, that part. Um, but yeah, the, um, and then when he picked up, it was this movie. Where he kept talking to me on there like it was an ex-girlfriend. Hey, yeah. haven't seen you in a while. You've been, <laughs> well, you know, it's good to see you. And then he picked it up. He's like, yeah, still worthy. You know, like. So, uh, speaking of me on there being picked up, mm-hmm. in giving us the Jane reveal later, I think we missed out on the Jane transform- transforming part. I think that would have been kind of dope. Because we saw her looking at the, the shards of me on there and we saw them start to move. And I thought I was really looking forward to seeing like her become the Mighty Thor. But yeah, we missed that so that later we could have a reveal that was in the trailers anyway, and it was already ruined. Yeah, you got the gathering storm. Yeah, yeah. you got the pieces shuff- shuffling around. And while I'd never seen Mjolnir do that before, I did like the scatter shot Mjolnir. I yeah, thought that was interesting cool. to get um, to get, make her version of Mjolnir a little bit different than his. Yeah, but I mean, you can't resell the toy. Unless you change it a little bit. Yeah. And like the next movie, it's going to be like, look, I put new straps on Mjolnir. Now Mjolnir with purple straps. Um, but yeah. If only, if only I knew, knew where Mjolnir was. What is it? Remember that little Mjolnir thing you bought me? Yes. You don't know where that's at? I think it's in my attic. Oh. We need to find it. I know. I should have found been it. A really good I, prompt. I, forgot I, I forgot I had it. That would have been a really good prompt. Because it was an in-joke where... Our friend, our DM used to keep a rubber mallet on the top, and I would just hold, hold it aloft. And you can't <laughs> exclaim Mjolnir, and eventually you guys got bought me a toy Mjolnir so I could hold that aloft. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it was that. It was the two most popular toys we played with at the table at D&D was the salad dongs <laughs> and the rubber mallet. Well, they're all, and also the little, the little um, putty. And then every time he would put like an exacto knife or something on the thing, he'd just be like, yeah. It's like, I need to stop leaving knives on the table. <laughs> it's like, yes, you do. <laughs> I just love the salad tongs. He had a pair of uh, salad tongs. Uh, I mean, the back scratchers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they were, I think they were salad tongs. Yeah, probably. Were so, so it was like spooky Halloween salad tongs, and it was little skeleton hands that were doing like this. 
And then, like, Nick would always come in and start playing with him. He'd type with him or, like, wave at people. or just, roll, roll dice with him. Yeah, or, like, walk up and start scratching your back with one of them or something like that. <laughs> <Miss Goosey. laughs> Ooh, excuse. excuse. Yeah, but, like, that, that, those tongs, like, those... I don't know how much he paid for them. But he got well worth his money. Yeah. Um, it's like, I've got idle hands. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, the fidget spinners took off. Like, so they, they, there was, like, fidget spinners and around, came out around the time as fidget cubes. Mm-hmm. And fidget cubes look good for people that actually fidget. The fidget spinner, I'm like, well, that's kind of stupid. And that's the one that took off. It took off for people doing fidget spinner tricks. I'm like, that's not what, that's not what that thing is for. It's for people that just, like, have idle hands and they have to, they have to do something. Yeah. It's like when I mentioned, like, I fuck with my hair. I've got idle hands. Oh. And, I, and if I'm doing something and not just sitting around, I fuck with my hair and I need to stop doing that. I'm going to buy you a Rubik's Cube. I don't want to fuck with. I just. I don't need. I don't want anything that takes brain power. I just need to do shit with my hands. Oh. Which is why, like, when we're sitting there, I've got like putty in my hand or something. Or when I'm holding mule near aloft, so I'm just doing something like I'm just banging my hand or something. Like I'm still listening, but I'm just futzing around. When I was a teenager, Fidgety. when I was a teenager, I did a lot of banging my hand. What do you mean teenager? He's not wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, am, I am so off the reservation from where we're at at this point. Okay, um, so we've talked about Christian Bale. Yep. We've talked about Natalie Portman. Yep. I was super happy to see Kat Dennings back in this movie, even though she had a very small part. Yeah, she was just there for the one scene. And I think they just mentioned Selvig. No, um, they showed him in uh, I, when Jane was really had to get back to the lab, and she was kind of like doing blood work on her. She was on a call with Selvig. Ah. So you briefly see him in a in like a, a FaceTime window. Got it. Okay. Well, the, and then I'm, never again. Well, I'm glad they at least gave him that, because mm-hmm. um, like that was the original, you know. Yeah, yeah, the original trio. Yeah, or... the original science science group. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I, the movie was very enjoyable. But like, it's kind of like Terminator, and then Terminator Two came out. And Terminator Two fucking rocked ass. It was better than the first Terminator. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's, I think, where this movie was. Like, expectations were so high from Ragnarok. Because it was such a good, complete movie. Mm. There's a lot of people who did not like Hela. I thought fucking Hela was hella badass. I thought she was really fucking good. It's a, cool. it's a lame power, I guess, to just be able to throw bladed weapons or that's whatever. Also not even her power, but... Well, I, just, I don't know what her power is, but... Just got us a death. She's like, like, the army of dead shit was kind of... Like, they threw on the weapon thing just because it was more flashy, I guess. Well, I mean, it was badass. Yeah. I, I thought that shit was awesome. Um, I had no problems with her. I think no, it was, she, she was fine. Was it Angelica Houston that played her? Uh, no, it's... um. No, Angelica Houston's too old. No, no, no. Uh, it's a girl who... Uh, no, I can't remember the character she played in Lord of the Rings. So... She was the, the, she was the elf in Lord of the... Like, the big... One of the big trio of, of elves in Lord of the Rings. Okay, okay, Ragnarok. So, Hello was played by Kate Blanchett. That's it. I was way off. Yeah. Um, so, and she was great. I thought she was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but that movie to me was like a complete movie. It had everything that I wanted. Like my favorite part of Ragnarok, two favorite parts. Mm-hmm. Very simple. Him doing the chain thing. Hold on. Just wait, wait till I'm coming back around. I'm not doing this. Like when he was facing away from the guy, when oh, he was okay. basically it's telling a, his master plan. Yeah, very beginning of the movie. Yeah, and then you have to wait that little bit of awkward time while this fucking chain is like slowly swinging in the background. I thought that part was fucking hilarious because I did not see that coming. It was right in the beginning and it completely set the tone for the rest of the movie. The second funniest part was when he, uh, Banner, jumped from the ship. Mm-hmm. And, fuck, just, and, and he just bounced off like, dude that shit was hilarious because even like the wolf's running and he's just like boom and then he kind of falls off the bridge and the wolf just kind of stopped like the fuck was that <laughs> and then just like kept on charging that shit was hilarious yeah. um, but that was like to me it was like almost a callback from the Edward Norton Hulk movie oh where, yeah yeah where he was like oh I gotta get mad and then he like jumped out the shit and he's like trying to change as he's falling and he's like oh shit and then yeah, he yeah. splats um, so I felt like that was like a little callback uh, but I don't even know if they acknowledge that movie like they do because it's, it's there because I mean um, Thunderbolt Ross is is a character not only that but I think they're they so they brought back um, oh in the what if they acknowledge his origin 
Yeah, and they also had well, they um, what was his name? Chom Chomsky or oh, um, the guy who plays um, yeah, Ross Bla- Bla- Eli Bla- Blasky Blonsky Blonsky. Blonsky. Um, so I think it was Eli Roth. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he he was him. he was a uh, abomination in um in Shang Chi. Yeah, and then but you don't you don't get to see him switch back, and I think. I just, we just recently saw him in something as Blonsky again. Maybe. I don't like, think so. I don't... I think unlike Hulk, it's, he's not supposed to be able to like go back and forth. Here. But maybe they'll change that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know much, much about Abomination. So, I was wrong. It's not Eli Roth. No, um, it's um, Tim Roth. Tim Roth. This, so this is the thing that sucks about getting old. You, you don't remember things like you used to. Well, I blanked on... I can't... I, can't even remember the elf's name. I keep wanting to say Gu- Guinevere, but that's way off. But it's a G word for the elf in Lord of the Rings. That Kate Blanchett played. Uh, Legolas? No. She was hot. <laughs> I'm sure she was. I'd hit it. I bet you would. I'd hit it with Sting. <clears throat> um, so... It glows when hot elves are near. <laughs> Giggity. Um, so yeah, Shang Chi was the last movie he was. Yeah, in. and I think we only see him as Abomination in that one. If, uh, if he came back as something else, I don't know. It's just weird that like I don't know if he actually did anything. <laughs> but he's 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 got he's got credits as I Abomination. Well, I don't remember if he um, maybe he had speaking lines. I don't know. I've only watched Shang Chi the once. That's one I wasn't super impressed with. Whereas a lot of people seem to have been like super in love with um, Shang Chi. I think it was only because of Aquafina. She was fucking great. Yeah, she was fucking great. Yeah, she was awesome. Um, but she's what made like Raya and the Last Dragon fun, kind of fun to watch too. Well, she's adorable. Yeah, like she's just plain adorable. There's a movie that we watched with Jack called um, The Bad Guys, mm. where she plays like a little hacker spider. Okay, and she's just like she's the best part of that movie too. Um, she's just she's fucking adorable, and she's yes. got she's got a great voice. She does. Um, so uh, watch anything with Aquafina. She's great. Well, I think um, I've seen a whopping two movies with her in it. And that's enough to make me go. She's like she was the best part in them. Yeah, Shang Chi. She was great. Like she you was. don't you don't even get to see her face, but like she put so much. Um, she put so much uh, personality personality in her voice for for, for Raya. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was just great. Um, wait, Raya. Raya the last dragon. She was the last dragon. She was the last. Yeah, she was a dragon. Yeah. So, ooh, excuse me. Um, do you have anything else you want to add about that? Wait, we didn't get through the actor list. I don't. We can. So I, I think people can IMDb it themselves. Yeah, but I don't know if there's anyone you want to shout out as a uh, like they this, they did really amazing. Cause I think everyone did good in this movie. Well, so I wanted you to say what your speculation was on the little girl, oh, because um, there's not a lot of people who seem to share your speculation. But after you told me what you did, I was like, what you said, I was like, that makes a lot of fucking sense. Well, Ted, I don't know anything about the character, so people are saying, um, I guess there's an any a love. Because all the all the concepts in the Marvel universe have mm-hmm. embodiments, like how Thanos is in love with death, because death is a a real person. Mm-hmm. So I guess love is supposed to be a real person too, and that's kind of like maybe where they're going with it. But she, well, like in the reflection, she looked like Singularity, who mm-hmm. was a character I like know nothing about except I used to play Marvel Future Fight, and she was a character in Marvel Future Fight. And essentially her body was made of stars and like her hair was kind of like flowy. And like when you would look at her, it just kind of looked like you were mm-hmm. looking into space, essentially. Well, she she reminded me like whenever um, Gore made his wish and mm-hmm. she came back and you saw the reflection of her in the water. She reminded me of one of the um, <clears throat> the Watchers. How yeah. the Watchers are always like in that, that start like they're blending in. Well, even Eternity himself was kind of, he had like the mask, but you just looking into him, you kind of saw the silhouette of a person. Right. But you were staring into space. And that's kind of what Singularity looked like. She was like the silhouette of a woman, but you would just be staring like into space, kind of like silhouetted as Singularity. Yeah, apparently. And I know fuck all about her, but. Apparently she's Mistress Love. Uh, Mistress Love Marvel Comics. Marvel and DC Wiki fandom. Yeah, to look right up there where it says six one six. Yeah. Well, this one says six one six as well. No, so that's six one six is a comic universe. I'm just being uh, a dick. Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah, Mistress Love is a cosmic entity from Marvel Comics. She's described as the embodiment of love. So, 
with her existence serving to control emotions. So, I don't know. I, I don't think they're connected. Well, the only thing would be love and thunder. She's love. He's the thunder. Yeah, but, but she, it could be a metaphorical love too. I think people are taking it literally, which maybe, maybe you're meant to. It could be a Mephisto. And people love the Mephisto line. <laughs> and when he finally shows up, it's going to be so it's going to be under, underwhelming. underwhelming. Yeah. And I hope that's. I hope that when he does finally show up, and he's like, "You could call me Mephisto." They have the wah, wah. <laughs> like I because it's it's been so worked up at this point. Yeah. They're yeah. not going to be able to live up to that reveal. Yeah. Unless it's somebody who's been there since like Iron Man. Yeah. Well, I'm a, well you could pull in Mephisto now without too much difficulty because I mean we fucking met Zeus. We're just like, here's Zeus. Hey, here we go. Here's Zeus, and here's like. Some other obscure gods, like the gods. The gods are real. They just kind of like all live in their own little city. And yeah, now that you say that, like that would have been the perfect time. I don't think Mephisto's the sort of he's not going to sit around in a city and not do anything because they these were apathetic gods, but like the humans can do whatever. He is actively fucking with humanity. Yeah, like this is his Super Bowl. Hmm. Like everything that's been going on right now, like this is his time to fucking shine. So I mean, like if you're if you're playing The Sims. It's like the gods are just like put it on auto and sit back and be like, oh, okay, this is cool. Mephisto's the guy that's like, I'm going to buy it, build him a pool and put them in the water and sell the ladders. <laughs> yeah, take all the ladders away. Drown, motherfuckers. You know what I want to see them do? Hmm. And I'm going to be over the moon if they do it because it would make sense. Mm -hmm. As if Mephisto needs to be a guy who's always been there, but you never suspect. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So it'd be great if Kevin Feige himself was fucking Mephisto, <laughs> you know? I, I think that would be I excellent. Don't, I don't think he's an actor, but it'd be kind of like when they first show him, he looks like that and he changes into whomever is actually going to play him. Yeah. It, well, he's just like hanging out and he looks like Kevin Feige and then he, cha yeah, he, he transforms into whatever the real form of Mephisto. I think that would be such a good fucking reveal. Well, I used to like the, um, when they had Stan Lee being the Watcher, and then was he? I mean, he was talking to Watchers, but he wasn't. He was wearing an astronaut suit. He wasn't But he's wearing... wearing a suit, so he wasn't really a Watcher. He was just a guy that like the Watchers talked to, which... It would have just, just make him a Watcher. Well, see, the thing I liked about that is that the Watchers have got to be somewhat... The way they're always depicted is like they're kind of bored. They're mm -hmm. just like impassively watching everything. Mm -hmm. They never get excited about anything. They never get sad about anything. They just watch. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there was like five of them standing around listening to fucking Stan Lee like tell stories. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, this guy's pretty interesting. <laughs> like, I, I, loved, I loved that bit. Like, uh, Guardians mm -hmm. 2? Not yeah. one of my favorite movies. Yeah. It, was, it had a lot of... It had some good stuff in it, but overall it was kind of... And then the end stinger where they were just kind of like, they started pimping away. He's like, guys, come back. I got more stories, guys. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, I thought that whole thing was great. Miss um, Marvel, uh, just to say, Miss um, Marvel was my favorite Stanley cameo. Mm -hmm. Only for the simple fact. And Captain Marvel, you mean? Captain Marvel, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, well, it's Car Carol Danvers was Miss Marvel first. So right. It's... There's been, like, they've... The, the whole Miss Marvel, the Captain Marvel thing, it's always... Yeah, yeah, it's Captain, Mar confusing. Captain Marvel. So, yeah, especially since in the MCU, there's there's, there's the one Captain Marvel, and it's Car Carol Danvers. It's not Marvel who was Captain Marvel. And I think um, Maria Rambeau was Captain Marvel afterwards, and mm -hmm. then it was Carol Danvers or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so, his cameo in Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel I no. thought was the best one. Because, like, one of my favorite movies of all time... Have you ever seen Mallrats? I have seen Mallrats. Fuck. Um, it's just him reading the script and he yeah. didn't have to say anything she just looks and he's reading the script and he just looks up and smiles at her and she gives him that smile back that's one of my favorite moments mm -hmm. and like the Marvel um, the Marvel stuff I thought that was great yeah um, but yeah I, I the movies I'm missing the Stanley knots like I wish they would find a way to like no it's okay you, really yeah I mean didn't it feel weird having um, Tarkin and in Rogue One. No, I'm not asking for gooey face. Oh, you just mean, okay. Just some kind of, like, I'm sure they're there. I'm okay. sure it's me reading okay. comic books as a, from a 12-year-old. I mean, I guess it could be like this, the um, the cameo in the Daredevil series. Do you remember that, that one? Where they go to the police station and it's just Sandy's picture on a wall. Yeah, like a wanted poster. Or like yeah. even when they killed like Tony Stark and like the fucking... Uh, Spider-Man movie after that there was like a picture of him like of, of like street art in the background mm, or something like okay. that like I I I loved those where, where's Waldo moments yeah yeah you know so um, just, just do something like maybe like they're flying through a place in some places called like Stanley something or other yeah I mean just something like that I think it would be great mm. like 
My and uh, my other favorite. My uh, what's your favorite Stanley cameo? It's, I don't know. It might be the the Captain Marvel one's good. I mean, I also like the one in Amazing Spider Man too, where Captain or um, Lizard and Spider Man are in the background fighting, and he's the librarian listening yeah. to music in the front. And he's like, and he's just kind of like, it's just kind of like doing his librarian thing while this all chaos is going in the background, but he's just he the can't. chair's about to slam into it, but he like, yeah, that yeah, yeah. that part was no, good. That, that one's pretty good. Um, even, s- even just like the original, maybe is it the original Spider Man? It might be the second Spider Man where he like just kind of he just some, pulls, some, someone, he pulls someone out of the way of some falling debris, and yep. it's just very simple, and he just gets to be like, oh, I, I say save somebody. Yeah, there's um there's a show, there's a YouTuber that Amber and I like watching called Awkward Ashley. And, like, she's going through, like, all the Marvel stuff right now. Mm-hmm. And, like, every time she watches a Marvel movie, we're excited to see if she, like, notices where um, Stan Lee is. Mm-hmm. And, like, and when she watched uh, Spider-Man, um, when he pulls him out of the way, she goes, is that fucking Stan Lee? Like, that, that <laughs> very quick clip, she, like, caught it that fast. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. She's adorable. Um, but my second favorite Stan Lee cameo was um, Tony Stank. I'm looking oh, yeah. for Tony Stank. Yeah, I just, I, I love how they utilize him in those movies. Um would you recommend Thor, Love and Thunder, to somebody? I think... N- discounting the whole number system that we set up in the beginning. Yeah, so I think um, if, you're, if you like Marvel movies, you're probably going to go see it. If you're, if you're kind of starting to feel the Marvel fatigue, maybe you can wait until Disney... I don't think this is one that was super enhanced by being on the big screen. Especially if you already subscribe to Disney+, Plus, it's not going to take long for it to, go, for it to get to Disney+. Plus. And I think you could get just as much waiting a couple months and waiting and watching it at home. Because there's not really like anything in this movie that like, oh my god, you spoiled this? The trailers did it already. Like, Natalie Portman being in the movie was, was like the spoiler. Everything else is just kind of like funny shit that happens. Well, it's like they didn't tell us anything about Gore. I loved his powers. Yeah, I... Like, he was cool. He, like, he was moving cool. through shadow, the shadow control monsters, stuff like that. Like, that's the, on, the only part of your assessment that I will disagree with is that when he was going into town and the shadows were, like, growing and everything like that, and then they started, like, coming up out of the thing. Like, that part, I think, looked amazing on the big screen. The spiders coming out and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, the very first time the, lad, the the spider legs, like, stepped out of, like, a dark alley, Amber was just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, I think that looked so good on the big screen. Um, I kind of like that he had a variety of monsters too. It wasn't like all, like how you, in the the Avenger movies you would get like the here's all of the Chitari that look the same, and now next movie here's all of the Ultrons which look the same, and mm-hmm. here's all of the um the whatever runners they were called and mm-hmm. that looked the same. These ones at least like here's a spider one, here's like a lizard one. Yeah, here's a big dog looking thing. Yeah. yeah, that that was cool. It was like anything of from Nightmare. Yeah, uh, and I it's thought a Nightmare Fuel. Yeah, and like, and I think that's what I really liked about him is that like his movement through shadow stuff like that. Most of it, all of his powers came based through the sword. Mm-hmm. But it's like the thing that I wanted to know more about the character was like, where did he begin and the sword end? Because it's like, mm. was he just was he just a host being controlled by the sword, or like, how much of him, him was there? Yeah, because um, I mean, you kind of get hints that the sword, like when he first holds onto it, and the sword kind of whispers like go to eternity and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah um personally mm-hmm. i would recommend that you go see this one in the theater um because it's going to be there for at least three maybe four more weeks it'll be there so for a little bit yeah like they usually stay in the theater about a month and a half i don't think this one is doing as hot as some of the other ones but no it's um it's not even up in like imdb's fan favorites but i have a feeling like after um dr strange mm-hmm it came to Disney Plus so fast. Like, it was still in the theaters, I think, and also on Disney Plus. So I have a feeling that you have a lot of people who watch the trailer and they're like, eh, I'll just wait. I'm already paying for Disney Plus. Why go to the theater to see it? I think they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit there. I think they still realize there's a lot of people who don't want to go out because of COVID. And plus, you can almost probably make double the receipts because... They have to share the money that for everybody to go see it in the theater, but anything that comes to them through the channel, they ain't got to share that with anybody, as far as I know. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we'll give you the rights to it for a month. Well, I, th- I think Disney is also pretty dickish about when it comes to theaters, because these theaters don't make money off the movies they show. Mm-hmm. All that money has to go essentially to the to mm-hmm. the people, uh, the, the yeah, movie owners. They make money with concessions. Mm-hmm. And that's why you would go get like a fucking drink that's this big. And it's like, $5, please. I hate that. It's like, just just give them at least $5 off every ticket. If the ticket's $12, yeah. give them three. 
Yeah. Just yeah. so I can eat a fucking popcorn that doesn't cost twenty eight dollars. That's like the prices of those things. <laughs> when we went to the theater, Amber bought us the two drinks, mm-hmm. and I had to go take a whiz, so I left. Um, when uh, the first time that like Jane was talking to yeah, her. you're talking. On, uh, they were talking on the um the the boat. Yeah, so I ran out to take a whiz, and I bought a popcorn. That fucking thing was nine bucks for a bag of popcorn, and like it was like all the refills you can get. And like, who's gonna leave a movie to get a? a I don't know. Yeah. Like that, that's the that's the worst part of going to go see a movie in the theaters. That's that's why when I go, I only buy a drink. Well, it's like even now, and even then, I don't usually drink all of it because I don't want to piss in the middle of a movie. That's true, but like it's every single time I've gone to the movie here lately, it's like you're watching the movie and it's like, oh, but Thor, if we go up there, uh, they'll they'll kill us. Well, that's why Jade, we have to have a plan in place. <laughs> Someone with a fucking can that they of Coke that they snuck in, mm-hmm. like three rows behind you. I hear that every single time. But like I watch I watch somebody eating a bag of Doritos uh, when Amber and I went to go see um, a movie just recently. So like. It's the prices have gotten out of hand. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, but every time you sneak in a bag of fucking Doritos, I gotta pay twenty five percent more, like a couple of months down the road. What's that thing that always? Like, I was sitting in the in the car waiting for you guys to show up, and I like saw like a car pull up, and out came like, a little couple. I'm like, okay, and they pulled out a baby. And I'm like, oh, fuck you and your fucking baby. It's like time to take our baby to go see a movie. I'm like, I better not be going to see Thor. It's not our theater. You know, uh, Amber and I we discussed that, and we had Jackson. Because we, we actually, we had that conversation. She goes, are we going to take our kid to go see a movie? And I said, why wouldn't we? And she goes, yeah, it all depends on like if he sleeps through like loud stuff. And Jack can sleep through loud shit. Mm-hmm. Because we didn't like do the whole shh while he's sleeping. So he could sleep through anything. Mm-hmm. And she said, but we're not going to be one of these parents that if he starts crying or showing his ass, we're not going to be sitting there in the sequence. Shh, shh, shh. She goes, the second he starts crying, one of us jumps up, takes him out of the theater. When he's under control, you bring him back in. If he starts showing his ass again, the other person picks him up Mm. and takes him back out. And if he can't get his shit together after two interruptions, we just leave. Yeah. Because you're paying a lot of money to go see that shit in the theater. Like, you don't... Kids are fine. Like, you can't get mad when you go see How to Train Your Dragon. But, like, when you go to see, like, the latest Marvel movie and stuff like that, like... I mean, they're bringing, like, baby. It's not like, he's going to remember this movie. He's not going to remember shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, but they want to see it. They, they want to see they it. They can't get a sitter. That, yeah, it's, so. it's, they're going for them. But And then I think you're kind of like, oh, we really wanted our son to see this. Your son doesn't give it two shits. Yeah. The only and, shits he's given yeah. is in the diaper. It, <laughs> hand him that Thor figure and find out if he's going to be like, meow, meow. Or no, he's going to be meow. like, yeah. so he doesn't care. But yeah. I think I think I'm we've thinking, done the thing. You can put a pin in this one. Yeah, like there's a lot more that we could talk about, but honestly, just go see the movie. It's uh, good. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's just going to be us making references to the to the mo- to the movie. Well, yeah, like, I really like this part. I really like this part. I really like this part. And, and I don't want our stuff to devolve into like us just talking about like the little parts that we like, even though there is a good bit of that. But like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it's it's very much worth a watch. Uh, oh, we got to talk about the stinger. Oh yeah, with with Her- 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 Heracles. Her- um, so, uh, Nick didn't get as much out of the stinger as Amber and I did, but... Because I don't know the actor. Yeah, so, um, if you watch Ted Lasso, the guy who plays Roy Kent, I don't know his name off the top of my head, I'm looking it up right now, so I sound more intelligent as I talk about it, um, but, uh, the guy who plays, uh, Roy Kent is going to be Hercules. Now, that said, um... They set up Adam Warlock mm-hmm. way back with, with Guardians 2. Guardians 1 2, yeah. And they haven't done a fucking thing with that. Mm-hmm. And now they're setting up Hercules, but at least they showed him. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's going to be something that's going to pay off sooner than later. I don't know, maybe. So I think you'd want... I, mean, you, I, don't, I think it would be more than just a cameo. It's just kind of like, a, yeah, we're going to have... We're going to make people remember the gods. Yeah, but like... So the actor's name is Brett Goldstein. And he's like one of the best parts of the the TV show. And Ted Lasso, by the way, I know that Nick and I will never do a review on it because most likely it's it's on service you never heard of before. It's, it's on like, Apple. Yeah, I'm not gonna but pay for Apple TV. Well, come over and just start watching it with us. I'll watch. I'll watch all of them again. Maybe. We just need to get you on someone's Plex server. If you have a Plex server, invite Nick to it, please. Um, okay, I'm not gonna get on a Plex server. Why? 
So now it's probably what, like I don't my TV can't get on it, which means I'd be probably getting it on my iPad and I'm not watching shows on my iPad. Can't you just get it through the iPad and then like flick it up to your TV? I don't think so. I don't have a smart TV. I'm buying you a fucking TV for Christmas. Uh, go for it. Well, no, I'm going to. Because... It's got to be a certain size to fit to my entertainment center. Well, just give me the dimensions. Yeah. If you want to buy like, me TV, buy me TV. Well, TVs are cheap, and if we're going to do this shit, we need to be professional <laughs> and we need to be for real. So, um, it's I watch um, Amazon, Netflix, and YouTube through my Blu-ray player, which is connected to my TV. My mm. TV itself, dumb as a brick. Hey, donate to our Patreon so we can get Nick a fucking TV. That would not be where the money went. Where did we put it? Uh, probably in the camera. Yeah, camera. I mean, we got a, the microphones, okay. Well, this isn't our microphone. Uh, well, we uh, we've got microphones. Oh, we got maybe, the, maybe an editing software so we could actually like step 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 step. Opening otherwise, and closing music. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There, there's there's places where money would go, and it's not me having a better viewing experience because I will watch something on the iPad, and be like, fine, because when the iPad is this close to me, it's as big as my TV is over there. Yeah, but then like if the fucking resolution doesn't go through you'll be like i really liked squishy face he was a really good actor in this movie yeah but like the ipad's pretty fucking decent like it's probably got better picture quality than my tv my tv's old never watch a fucking movie on a phone or an ipad dude just watch it on a big screen tv can't take my tv to the bathroom (laughs) touche (laughs) well that's just that's my biggest worry is that they're not going to do anything with it because you know they teased adam warlock and everyone was fucking a buzz well i think it's going to be a uh it's probably something being saved for Guardians 3, I hope. I hope. Like, I, I really hope it, it pays off. But. So, anything else? No. All right. Well, thank you for watching New to the Scene. I've been Nick. I've been Lance. Um, join us next time. Uh, yeah. So, the next thing we're going to review. Hey, Nick. Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy 3? No, not yet. Okay. I don't think that one's coming up anytime soon. I think that's next year. We looked up what the next one was, and that one's further down the list. So I know we're never going to watch this one either, but have you seen Uncharted? I have not seen Uncharted. Have you played the games? I have not played the games. I watched it the other day with uh, Mark Wahlberg and um, Spider-Man, mm-hmm. Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucking good. Mm. I don't think I'm going to take the opinions of fucking people on the internet when it comes to movies anymore. Because like, I saw it, and I was like, eh. That's not fucking. It's not. It's not the people I want. It's not Nathan Fillion. Well, I mean, Nathan, Nathan Fillion's old. He is old now. Like the stuff that like Tom Holland was doing. Nathan but I mean, Fillion, Marky Mark's old too. Was he the old? He was. He yes. The old motherfucker. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, he could. That could have been. That could have been Nathan Fillion. I, I mean, it, that would have I mean, been fine. Marky Mark, Nathan Fillion. Get rid of Marky Mark. And his funky bunch. We don't need any of them motherfuckers. So the thing that, and I know we're, just, I'm just bringing this up at the end of the video because I know, I know we'll never do a review on it, but I do think it's a crime because that's the one thing I did want to touch in, at least on one of our videos, mm-hmm. was like the court of public opinion gets out on something before it comes out and they ruin it. And then when the movie comes out, it's something that's worthwhile, but it gets undersold because people have already given it a bad bill of sale. I think people were um, dunking on Alita a bit. When Captain Marvel was out. And that was a good movie. Elite is so fucking good. Yeah. And now we'll never get to see uh, fucking Edward Norton. Probably not. I don't I don't know that, that I don't know if they've full on shit can sequels for that movie, but I don't think I don't think we'll ever it. see But that movie was so fucking good. So fucking good. That's like a nine or a ten movie for me. That movie's so fucking good. Yeah. So you had Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. I thought he was great. Um you had Mark Wahlberg as Victor Sullivan. Again, he did a good job, but Mark Wahlberg is always Mark Wahlberg in whatever movie he's in. Um, It had an amazing turn with one of the characters. They gave a nod to... um, uh, God, what's his name? Nolan North? Yeah, they gave a nod to Nolan North. Um, Do you ever plan on watching it? Don't talk about it here. Okay, we won't talk about it. Not the end of our third Love and Thunder movie. Yeah, no. Um, This this sounds like a thing that we could be not recording. uh, Yes, but I'm just going to say this. Like, don't... Don't, don't listen to the fucking static when it comes to like, cause like, yeah, don't, listen. don't listen to us. Make your own opinion. Well, yeah, but like it's, it's the funny, the fucked up thing about it is, is that I watched the movie and I was like, that was a really good movie. There was a lot of love that was put in that movie. Mm-hmm. And now they, we probably won't get a second one because the mm-hmm. fucking internet destroyed it. So just 
make up your own fucking mind, watch the trailer, see if it's for you, and try and block out all the fucking negative stuff. Because it seems like the negative stuff gets heard more than the positive stuff anymore. Yeah. No, well, it's the people who hate a thing are so much louder than the people who li- who, are, who either like it or are mediocre on it. Yeah. But I like think a- it's um, 80% of the noise is, is made by 20% of the people. It's 80-20 comes up a lot, whereas usually the, the small number is the one that's... Because if you if you like kind of liked a movie, you're just gonna be like oh, I kind of liked it. But if you fucking despised a movie and you like the and you like the game or whatever, you're gonna be one of those vocal twenty percent that's got to tell everybody to not go see the movie. I might have to make you go do a. I might make you have to do you a have you seen on it. Maybe so so you'll watch it because like I do want to talk about that movie. Okay. But anyways, okay. Signing off. Bye, everybody. See ya, fuckers. That's nice. <laughs>